YouTube team keep it clean what's going on welcome to another episode of NFL questions from subs where you can ask me any question and we answer it in a video just like this if you want to be part of it you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com or for the team keep it clean patrons you can send it directly on patreon team keep it clean I love y'all it's already well as of the recording of this video it's already February 10th this month is it's going by fast man but anyway we got some great questions that we've been hoping for a chance to get to for a really long time now let's do it first question came from samantha she said hey engraving first off let me start by saying i love your show hey appreciate that i said my kids practically know your theme song <laughs> by heart <laughs> and my husband hums it around the house when he thinks i'm not paying attention <laughs> hey totally appreciate it thank you uh, she said i thought of a crazy idea and want to know what you think about it i love to see eric being to me come to baltimore in some way as I think he could take our offense to the next level. With Harbaugh's contract ending after next season, well, they did say that he agreed, uh, Jamison Hensley, when it was Harbaugh's uh, presser, he did say that uh, Harbaugh, they agreed to a four-year contract extension with him. So it's looking like, um, yeah, it's a four-year contract extension. Now, again, that doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, all right, Harbaugh's safe for sure, but to me, I think he's probably safe for sure. But we'll see how things go. But anyway, she said, do you think DaCosta will bring in Biennemi as an offensive coordinator this year with the expectation of moving him into the head coach position, position next year? He seems to be getting passed over for head coaching jobs over the past few seasons, so maybe this will be a good opportunity for him to learn uh, the organization first before taking the reins completely. Hope this email finds you well, and hope you and your family continue to have a blessed 2022. Appreciate it. Um... You know what's funny? She sent this email on January 22nd. Um, I'm recording this on February 10th, but just like two days ago, it came out that Eric Bieniemy's contract with the Kansas City Chiefs is expiring. So he could either, he could stay with the Kansas City Chiefs, obviously he could re-up with them, or he could move on somewhere else. And if he got hired somewhere else, even as an offensive coordinator, he could do that because he's a free agent. He's a free agent, so he could go where he wants to. So now, and when I first saw that, I just thought about it. I was like, oh, ah, but I just know it's, it's, it's not going to happen. Um, but I, I, would, I would be down for your idea, but I just, Ravens just, they, they're not going to do it. Next question came from my boy Chris. He said, hey, Graven, hope all is well with you and the fam. Um, I'm leaving you an article I read and heard from Fox Sports Radio host Doug Gottlieb. Oh, I, I remember him. I, I, I. He he ain't he's not a big fan of Lamar Jackson. Definitely, I forgot. He said something like crazy, like a, a year or two ago. I forgot what it was, but it was something like whoa. But anyway, uh, he said, "I just wanted to get your opinion on the statement about why the Ravens should move on from Lamar Jackson." Uh, be blessed and be safe. He said, I want you to think, this is from Doug Gottlieb. He said, I want you to think about this for a second. We're told there are a couple of reasons why the Niners are going to move on from Jimmy Garoppolo at the end of this year. And what are those reasons? He's never healthy and always missing time. He has this ability to turn the football over at inopportune times. And there seems to be a ceiling. Maybe it's the Super Bowl and maybe it's the NFC Championship where he didn't actually have to throw the football. The Niners are like, he can only get us to a point where we can't break that point. Now let's take Lamar Jackson. Lamar has been better than most uh, than what most anyone would have thought coming out. Uh, Lamar Jackson last year had to come from behind winning the playoffs, which was something he had not yet done. But there does appear to be a ceiling for how far he can take you. We heard last year you got to get him more weapons. Then this past offseason, they went out and got a talented wide receiver who's often hurt in Sammy Watkins. <laughs> <laughs> they all, They also drafted in the first round a wide receiver in Rashad Bateman, and they have another first round wide receiver in Hollywood Brown. In terms of weaponry, Mark Andrews is a tremendous pass catching tight end. Bateman is a freak talent. Brown can take the top off of a defense in Watkins, although he wasn't uh, what he was built to coming out as a top 10 pick. That dude is a big target with good hands. And the guy, if he's your third best option, you're, in, you're pretty good. I think Baker is done in Cleveland, and I thought the biggest question in the future contracts was going to be with Baker Mayfield. But what about Lamar Jackson? He's had better supporting talent on offense than he's ever had. Uh, less the running backs, I'll grant you that. Of the division, Pittsburgh is not as good as they've been. Cleveland is not particularly good. And although Cincinnati is good and they smashed Baltimore twice in terms of the AFC North, it's usually a much better division of what it is this year. This is his worst year throwing the football. He's thrown the most interceptions, yet he has better weapons around him than he's ever had. The last two years, he's been hurt. 
He's had COVID twice, but he's also been hurt twice. Uh, there seems to be some sort of ceiling with Lamar, at least to this point in the playoffs. There's some Garoppolo to it. Garoppolo went to a Super Bowl. This cat did not. And Garoppolo had a very good defense that year. And the Ravens have had a great defense in years past. As much as Lamar has been championed for not having an agent, his mom is his agent. That's not always a good thing. I wonder what the Ravens' future with Lamar Jackson looks like. John Harbaugh in the front office, by their words, seem to be completely in. But wouldn't this be doubling down on a guy who, although a complete freak talent, and the guy who is, by all accounts, the lead of their franchise, isn't he hurt? Plus, running quarterbacks get hurt more often, and eventually they lose their step, and now they get hit more often. And oh yeah, by the way, you've used all your resources to put a great offense around them, and you haven't gotten better output. Isn't there that same ceiling that sits there for Jimmy G? Uh, what the Ravens do with this offseason with Lamar's contract is as interesting as what the Packers do with Aaron Rodgers, and more interesting than what the Browns do with Baker Mayfield. All right, so... Oh, that was a lot. Uh, what I got from that was that um, he said that the, the Ravens, people said Lamar needed more weapons. The Ravens went out and got him more weapons. And these are the best weapons that Lamar's had uh, in his career. And I would agree with that. Hollywood, Rashad Bateman, even though he missed the first like five, six games. Sammy Watkins, even though he missed the, the next five, six games after Rashad Bateman came back. Um, Hollywood, Mark Andrews. Um, but the running backs weren't there. Running backs not being there were a big part of the offense. Again, people, they, they give the coaching staff, they give the coaching staff credit in a pass when it comes to injuries, but when they talk about Lamar Jackson, they don't give him the, 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 they don't give him the credit or a pass when it comes to injuries. It's always different. It's always there, and you, you can always tell. Um, now, were the weapons right? Oh, yeah, the weapons were there. They were there. Um, but the offensive line, it wasn't. It wasn't. Ronnie Stanley injured, Tyre Phillips injured, Ben Cleveland injured, uh, Bozeman even got injured for a tiny, tiny bit, not too, too long though, Patrick McCarry injured, um, offensive line was just beat up, they, they were beat up, and when they were out there, they were pretty bad, uh, there were a lot of times where Lamar Jackson didn't help the offensive line, he would hold on to the ball too long, there would be some times when guys would, would be open, but he wouldn't get it to them, um, so it's... I, I I see what he's saying, but at the same time, I don't see what he's saying because I don't think he's looking at it um, looking at it in super detail. He's looking at it for sort of face value. He, 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 see, he, he sees everything from afar, sort of, and he's looking from afar and looking at the numbers. Oh, yeah, Lamar threw the most interceptions. Hey, look, the Ravens, they drafted Rashad Bateman in the first round, Hollywood first round, Sammy Watkins, former first-round receiver, Mark Andrews, he was drafted in, what, the third round, but he's like a first-round tight end, first-round talent for sure. So, yeah, the weapons were there, but then if you look closely – and really examine what happened, you're like, oh, yeah, what, what he's saying, it just, it don't make that much sense. Next question came from my guy, Kingston. He said, hey, hope you and the team are doing well. I got a question about if you think we should be aggressive or passive. Going into the offseason, there won't be a lot of cap space unless we sign Lamar, and that will determine if we are aggressive or passive. So my question is, do you think we should go passive or aggressive and try to build a super team like the Rams? I think we should try to build an offensive juggernaut to try to win a Super Bowl and give the city another ring. But that's me. What do you think? Oh, I would love for them to be aggressive. I would love it. Love it. Um, I know a lot of people have a problem with the Rams style. Oh, they gave up. Now, and I would never expect the Ravens to give up all them first round draft picks. The Ra Ravens would never. Uh, but I would not mind them being a lot more aggressive. I wouldn't mind that at all. I would not be mad. If they started making all these trades and really trying to build a super team like that, you, you think I'm going to be mad at that? No, <laughs> not at all, man. And the Rams, they, they have showed like, hey, we're all in. Now, something with the Rams that I actually literally saw today on February 10th is that while they've had this all-in approach, um, they've been very, very healthy for the most part. They've lost a guy or two here or there, but overall, they have been an extremely healthy team. So that helps. <laughs> helps a lot. Because you, if you're going all in on these different guys and these different players, and they not staying healthy, ooh, then it, then it just it backfires. But if you're going all in and they are staying healthy, then that's a good look. Um, so with Ravens, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind an aggressive approach. I would be with it all day, but I just I don't see them really doing it. Now, for Ravens, hopefully they can find a balance like right in the middle to where they're not just they're not passive like, oh, whoa, that guy's a nice free agent. He would be great for our team, but uh, let's wait till his price comes down. Um, 
and because you know that that's that's Ravens a lot. They they say right player, right price. Um, but I, I think it's more like right player their price because they can be some right players out there. But Ravens like ah yeah we ain't about to pay all that bread for no outside guy. Normally Earl Thomas was an outlier because they they don't never do stuff like that. And then with the whole Earl Thomas, when they, they saw it, they, they, they just felt it wasn't working out as good as it should have. Then they were like, all right, you know what? Yeah, let, let's get out of this one. And, yeah, that's been that. Now, they do re-sign their own. They'll, they'll re-sign their own guys that they drafted um, a lot of times. But as far as outside guys coming in and getting big con, it just doesn't really happen like that. As far as outside free agents and stuff like that. So, but I, I hope they can find somewhere like, again, a happy medium. This question came from my guy Dylan. He said, I ain't graving the team, keep it clean, hope all is well. Uh, I was going to email straight after the last game, but it took me some time to dwell on the last season uh, as a whole and just uh, to see a couple of playoff games. So two to three points here to get some light. Uh, for, on for the Ravens as a whole. Number one, we need Lamar more than Lamar needs us. <laughs> for those saying to not pay Lamar, we are all unique in our perspectives and thoughts for the best of the team. It's what makes us fans. But look at the Jets, Broncos, Giants, Panthers, Texans. These are all teams and fan bases and positions who would do so much to have a talent on their team like Lamar. Whatever your opinion of Lamar is, that's fine. But no matter the circumstances, we hardly get blown out. And with Lamar, it always feels like we have a chance, even with injuries. Very true. And without him, it almost seemed like there was no chance. But anyway, number two. He said, I've heard talk about us picking up the Georgia defensive tackle with pick 14. From the outset, it seems reasonable, and his frame and play will suit Baltimore Ravens football. However, and this may seem like a shot, I don't want to waste pick 14 on a defensive tackle who plays in a defensive scheme uh, where Wink would have been using his fabricated pressure. If we have a scheme where we can change, uh, change to and use a four-man front and allow the likes of Queen behind a defensive line to read and react, something he was doing a fantastic job of in the later end of the season, making contact with ball carriers behind the line of scrimmage and O.A. being able to rush from the edge consistently and not drop back, then I'm fine with it. And looks like you may get exactly what you wanted. He said, if we, if we are picking defensive first, and for me, uh, if Wink still would have been a defensive coordinator, that would have determined our pick. Since he isn't, pick the defensive tackle previously mentioned if he's available. If Wink would have still been our defensive coordinator, we should, we should trade up to the top 10 and get Kyle Hamilton the safety. Having a traditional free safety, something that we do not have on our roster, uh, really alongside a returning and hopefully healthy Marcus Peters, would make the back end of our defense much better and hopefully create some more turnovers uh, and this could be said uh with mcdonald as well i mean w even though it's not wink anymore and it's mcdonald we still don't have a free safety we don't so still something to think about uh he said back in wink scheme the secondary was so much more important than a defensive front uh and for me personally it would get annoying watching these all-out blitzes on, <laughs> on every drive <laughs> Hopefully this wasn't too long in the end, but I spent some time since the end of the season thinking about it. And and, and you got uh, what you wanted. Well, hopefully we'll see how Mike McDonald does as a defensive coordinator. But sounds like uh, seems like from what he did uh, over at Michigan that Ravens might be on the right track. Next question came from my guy Sebastian. He said, considering that Tyron Matthew doesn't sign with the Ravens, do you think we should try for Xavier Howard again? Then move Marcus Peters to safety and use him like Ed Reed? No, 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 no. Not at all. Marcus Peters should not uh, be a safety at all. Reason being because he's a corner, and he's, he's not a corner that's slowing down. He's not a corner that can't keep up anymore. He's a corner that's still playing good, so you need to keep him at corner. That is too early for that safety transition, uh, if it even happens. But anyway... He said, uh, as far as offensive coordinator, if they would have moved on from Greg Roman, or if they would move on from Greg Roman, do you think we need someone like Shanahan? Lamar will kill in the Shanahan-type offense, and I personally want to see DuVernay Approche be used like Debo Samuel. I don't think they'll move on from Roman, though, but hey, a man can dream. Hope you and your family are good. Ravens fan from the Philippines. Oh, shout out to Manila. Um, he, uh, shout out to uh, DuVernay. See, with DuVernay, he don't even got to be used like Debo Samuel. He should be used like Percy Harvin. I think that would be the better comparison and better usage uh, for Devin DuVernay, like Percy Harvin. Percy Harvin 
wasn't the best route runner, neither is Devin Duvernay. Percy Harvin had hands, just like Devin Duvernay. Percy Harvin low to the ground, but like thick, just like Devin Duvernay, little pit bull. And then uh, they both got speed. They're physical players that got speed. And you get in the ball, in short yardage, you, you, you get them a little dump off, you throw it to them in the flats or something, and then you can watch them go to work. So, yeah, what's the name? Um, no more no more Debo Samuel, Duvernay comparison. And I, I had did a lot myself, but no, it, it, it's Percy Harvin. He should be used like that. Next question came from Javo. He said, I know we need to get young on the defensive line, and I agree. I read comments from fans who want to get rid of Brandon Williams, in which I disagree. I don't think Ravens fans realize the impact he really has on our line. What are your thoughts? No, I, I think they should move on from Brandon Williams. If they bring him back, then the, – because the biggest thing is not even Brandon Williams. His impact is his salary versus impact. A lot of fans feel like Brandon Williams is just not worth the high-priced amount uh, that he has been. Uh, so that that's that's the biggest thing I think with Ravens fans. But as far as Brandon Williams, I think the Ravens themselves just want to get more athletic up front, and they don't want somebody who's only a run stuffer, and that's it. They're gonna want somebody who can be a run stuffer, but who can also provide interior pressure. That's not Brandon Williams' game, and not saying that that's a bad thing, but that's just not part of his game. That's not why they even brought him in in the first place. Uh, so I, I think that they will still move on from him. Uh, he also asks, who has a higher ceiling between Malik Harrison and Patrick Queen? Well, on the Ravens, I would say Patrick Queen because he's the one that is used uh, a million times more uh, than Malik Harrison. We haven't really gotten to see much of Malik Harrison uh, on the Ravens, so there's a lot of unknowns there. It's not known how quick he could pick up the defense. It's not known what his abilities are in the NFL like that because he just simply hasn't been out there like that. Now, uh, he is Patrick Queen obviously got the speed. He is a great blitzer. Um, but the tackling, Malik Harrison got him with tackling by far. With physicality, Malik Harrison got him by far as well. Malik Harrison ain't slow now. I don't think he's Patrick Queen fast, but he ain't slow. So if I had to choose, like, based off of what we have seen, um, I will probably, right now, um, I would say Malik Harrison because the physicality is already there. I think it's very hard to, um, to teach physicality. It's, it's very hard to teach that. Like, somebody doesn't just wake up one day and say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm about to get rough today. I'm, I'm about to be real physical today. Like, I, I feel like that's something you got to have. I'm not saying that it's something that you can't learn, but since Malik Harrison has it and he's a linebacker, like, he got that already. So if he had an opportunity, like Patrick Queen had an opportunity, I think he could do a phenomenal job. But I don't really think he's going to get that opportunity. Uh, he also said, would you rather sign J.C. Jackson or Gilmore in free agency? Uh, J.C. Jackson all day. Uh, he said, here's, here's a non-Raven question for you. Why do you think teams aren't calling Eric Bieniemy for a head coach position? He's obviously one of the best play callers in the league, but teams are overlooking him. Could it be a race thing, or is he waiting on the right time, right team? I don't know what. I don't know what it is. That's a really great question. I, I have no clue. It could be that teams are overlooking him. It could be, like you said, he may be waiting for the right opportunity. Because Just because there's an opportunity there, it doesn't mean that it's a good opportunity. It doesn't mean that it's a good fit. It doesn't mean that it's, it's one that you should absolutely take. Uh, but I, I don't know what it is with Eric B. Enemy, so I, I wish I had the answer to that. Um, he also asks, I don't know if this question was asked or not, but what must the Ravens do to keep up with the rest of the powerhouse teams in the AFC? Chiefs, Bills, and even the Bengals are going to get better and can easily put up 50 on you. There you go. You answered your own question. They got to be able to put up points. They have to be able to score points. Not field goal points. Not just field goal, but touchdowns. They got to be able to get into the end zone much better. Um, and then the last thing he asks is, do you think Hollywood would resign with, with us because of Lamar, or do you think that he would leave? He's a player that nobody is talking about whose contract is also almost expired. Now, Eric DeCosta did say that he's going to pick up the fifth-year option, but actions speak louder than words, so we're going to see how that goes down. But as far as Hollywood, um, I, uh, I think if Lamar's there, then, yeah, he, he wouldn't mind staying if, if, if Lamar left. Um, then I think Hollywood would be like, Ugh. and even sometimes I think Hollywood might be thinking about it. That's a big decision. Um, obviously, he loves the Ravens and stuff and uh, loves playing with Lamar, uh, but he still got to do business for himself. And if he felt like the Ravens were the best move for him, okay, cool. If he felt like he could do better elsewhere, okay, then he would have to do that. Um, but them, if they pick up the fifth-year option, 
Uh, that gives them some more time. That gives him some more time. And what they also could do, too, uh, is they could try to resign him early. Like, they could be like, oh, no, no fifth-year option. But let's resign you to a deal that we will like uh, under our terms. So we'll see what happens with Hollywood soon. Next question came from Crystal. She said, good morning. Since I heard about this whole Brian Flores thing, which I know was a long time coming, do you think there will be a black head coach for the Ravens when John is gone? Uh, I don't know. I, I think it's like it's hard to think about that because who would be next in line? Uh, usually for enough teams, it's the coordinators who are next in line when it comes to a head coaching job if the current head coach is fired. It's either the coordinators or somebody uh, or an outside hire. Um, so, and, and it all depends, too. Like if the head coach retires, then it will usually lean more towards uh, one of the coordinators because teams would like to have that uh, continuity and that consistency when it comes to their culture and stuff like that. Uh, and right now the coordinators are Greg Roman and Mike McDonald. Um, so I, it's, 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 that's such a hard question to ask because it's just you, we don't know right now. We, we, don't, we don't know like what would be next in line. So much would depend on how John Harbaugh left, uh, when and if that time comes. Like if he retired or if he was fired. Because I think if he retires, then they'd be like, okay, we stick with, they could stick from within. But if he got fired, then I think they might look for somebody on the outside. Next question came from my boy Rico. He said, Engraven, what's going on? Peace and love to you and the fam and much success on your channel. Appreciate it, Rico. Uh, I was thinking the what if thought. Uh, what if the Ravens, oh, you meant what if. Uh, so he said, what if the Ravens go after Michael Thomas uh, in a trade and they trade him for Boykins or any other wide receiver that we are not using? I mean, Saints could do that since they got some work to do with their cap. Watch they end up keeping everybody like they always do. Because they always got work to do with their cap. But anyway, um, I, I just I wouldn't see them trading receiver for receiver. I just I, I wouldn't see that. Uh, but hopefully Michael Thomas is healthy. But I, I wouldn't be mad if they got Michael Thomas too. So they had Michael Thomas, Hollywood, and Rashad Bateman. So Hollywood, you got your deep threat. Uh, Michael Thomas, you got your short yardage guy. And then Rashad Bateman, you got your uh, intermediate medium guy. Oh, that, that'd be nice. And then you got Mark Andrews. And, and I wouldn't be mad at that. Uh, and then he said, and or the Ravens switch Marcus Peters' position to safety since he has an eye for reading quarterback. No, no, no Marcus Peters to safety. No. Mm -mm. Uh, and he said, and put Casey Hayward in his spot. That's only if Elliott doesn't go, which probably won't happen. These are just thoughts, so tell me what you think. No, Marcus Peters to safety, no, not at all. Um, he is not a safety, he's a corner. Let, let, like, let, let that man start falling off first before we keep trying to switch him to safety.